Hey everybody, it's Tyler with Tapper and welcome back to another video. So a while back we took a trip to Hawaii and this is another remnant from that trip. I left a little bit earlier than my family did and my father and brothers were nice enough to send me back this beautiful piece of koa wood. So I wanted to make something for my parents for Christmas uh, as a little bit of thanks. So it might have been subconscious because it was from Hawaii, but the shape of this slab of wood really w reminded me of a wave rolling in on the beach. So what I wanted to do is kind of play with that, um, kind of do the opposite negative space of it. So I put some blue, and this is a two-part epoxy that I'm brushing in there. The blue is a pearl for automotive paint, and I like mixing that in there. I took a lot of it off and then put some clear over the top to give it a little bit of depth. So after everything had cured up, it was time to try and get this thing cut. If you've ever worked with koa, it's a very hard tropical wood. Um, so it's not an insubstantial task to get it cut through. So I went to use power tools for as much of it as possible. With the live edge on the top, it wasn't something where I could stick both sides through that circular saw like that very easily. So I did that and I started coming at it with a handsaw. As you can see, the progress was extremely slow with the handsaw. Um, I probably spent half an hour, probably 45 minutes, trying to get this thing cut apart. Various different saws, I'd try wedging it open. Um, but yeah, just I wasn't really getting anywhere with it. I had a little bit of a channel cut all the way around it, so I felt comfortable getting out the saws all. R sped stuff up, and since it did have that little bit of a cut in there, it guided it so it was relatively straight. It definitely wasn't completely flat on the back, but at that point I was just ready to be done. To frame this piece of koa, I ended up ripping down some curly maple that I had. I figured that'd be a nice contrast between the light and the dark wood. I'm just running all through the table saw so I have a consistent width of it. To get the miters on these on the frame, I took it over to the chop saw. It's not really important that these are come to out ex any exact length. I did measure them to make sure I was in the right ballpark, but I'm going to end up fitting the koa slab to it. So I'm going to make sure that the tops and the bottom are the same and the two sides are the same. Here you can see a little bit different of a view about how I flip them over and mark everything out before I cut them. Now when these don't come out to be the exact same length, a lot of times I'll come back and I'll sneak up on that line with the chop saw because it's real easy to just make a couple of cuts, compare them, and then go back. All of these cuts will start making more sense after I start assembling it and putting it together and you can see it, but basically I'm creating a channel in the back so that I can lay a piece of wood in behind it and then I'm also creating a channel in the front. Um, so I can sink the co wood down into the frame. Um, I was going to trim it off all the way, but I decided to go a little bit different of a route, and I'll show you here in a minute how I trim it out with the chisel. And here you can see the part on the back where that uh, board's going to rest in. All these cuts are made. I came back through. I put the frame together and then I just taped all the joints together. They'll still give me enough wiggle room where I can flex them apart and stick the glue in there. Um, I come back in with masking tape just for the final clamping. This works pretty well. Um, this isn't going to be the only strength I'm going to have in these corners, so I wasn't horribly concerned with it being the best glue up or the best fit. Um, all the strength is going to come later here. I let all that dry overnight. That gave it enough strength. Basically all I needed was it for it to give enough strength to hold together while I was cutting some uh, slots out in here. So I made this jig. It just rides along the edge of my fence. It's basically a, you make a 90 degree um, fixture with an edge that'll ride up against your fence and it'll create these slots that are evenly spaced out from the edge of the frame. So with those slots cut out, I could put some splines in here. I'm going back, I had another piece of thinner koa wood, cutting little triangles out of that. And you want to make sure that you put the grain uh, perpendicular to the grain in the frame. That'll give it a little bit of extra strength. Um, but with these in here, that, that joint's not going anywhere. 
And you can see here the piece of coal wood stock that I was working with and how I fit it. It wasn't the same thickness all the way through, so I had to keep running it through that channel to see where it was where it was tight, and then I would mark it out, and then I'd come back just with the hand saw and stick it in there. Bringing the slab of koa back and I'm seeing I need to fit it inside here so I'm doing two things. I'm seeing how much I need to cut off the edge of the piece of koa and I'm also seeing how much of the channel on the top I need to chisel out. Originally I was going to make it like the back and just have it completely sunk in but I decided I kind of liked having, um, having that channel in there. So I went back and I chiseled out this part so the koa slab would have a piece to lay flat on and then that channel over the top would still be there. I use it with some pretty sharp, freshly sharpened chisels, and even with that, that curly maple was a little bit of a challenge to get cut. I had to work at it for quite a while. With the piece of koa laid in there, I put a pencil line down. This mark is going to be where I round over the edge of it into. I didn't want to use a router because this thing was not even. Um, and all kinds of pockets. I was afraid I was going to chip it out. So I just used a block plane to get down in there and it, it rounded out pretty easily. So everything's all ready for the koa to be fitted in, but before I glued that in I wanted to come back and make a few couple final touches to the frame. I'm coming in on the back side and I'm putting a 45 degree angle on there. I kind of like doing that because when you set it up against the wall, it looks like it's floating a little bit more. It just gives a little bit more of a sense of depth to it. For the top, I used a roundover bit. Uh, I wanted it to match the slab that was going in there. Um, and I made, I made sure to set it to the depth so that it would just barely kiss those koa splines. I didn't want it going too far in, because I figured it would be kind of hard to get them exactly even, and I thought that might compromise the strength if I went into them with that. I did not use wood glue to glue this in because the back of this was not completely flat. I used a DevCon 5-minute epoxy. I thought was it was going to fill in all those gaps a little bit better and it was going to cure hard um, again give it a little bit of extra strength. I ended up going with a different finish in the end. The first finish I put on here was a butcher block oil um, and just rubbing it on there you can really see the grain pop. What I liked about it is it had some oil in there so I knew it would really bring the chitoyance of the wood out. Especially that curly maple just really got beautiful when it got on there. In the end, I put something a little bit different on there to give it a little bit more of a high gloss. This was labeled as Paduke. Um, I really liked it. It looked like a sunset and clouds in the back there. I pre-finished it uh, so that way I wouldn't have to be trying to apply finish in the back and having it drip down in the back in between. To hang this, I'm using just something you'd use for a regular picture. You can get the stuff at any hardware store with the bunch of them for super cheap so I'm marking where the holes go and then I'm going to come back in and so I can hit those nails I'm putting them in some wire cutters so I can tap it down in there and get them started otherwise there's no way you'd hit them if you tried to have your fingers on them. Then after they're started of course you can just bang them in normally. For the final finish on everything to bring out that really super glossy look, I went up to 600 grit and then I used that butcher block oil and I um, mixed it 50-50 with a high gloss polyurethane. Uh, that really seemed to bring out the shine in it and you know give it a nice thick layer so you could really see all the grain. I always get a little attached and sentimental to stuff that I make, but I really had a hard time giving this one up. Uh, that said, I'm really glad my parents got it. I was really thankful for them to send me back that beautiful piece of koa wood, so it was good to give them back a little bit of it for Christmas. 
Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. Love it if you'd leave that thumbs up. That really helps me. Love it if you'd share this around. That really helps me. Uh, if you haven't already and you would like to see more of this, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I will see you guys soon. Thank you. My mom's in North Carolina. This one I kind of like. I need to